Welcome to this step-by-step -step guide to installing the MaxView Gazelle Pro Omnidirectional Mobile TV Antenna. If you are a competent DIYer, you may be able to complete this installation yourself. However, many of our customers will use a professional installer. Visit our website and click Find an Installer to find the closest one to you. Before making a start on this project, please make sure your TV is Freeview compatible. Most TVs now come with an integrated Freeview tuner as standard. If your TV does not have this, then a Freeview receiver can be purchased separately. Here are the contents of the Gazelle Pro. The antenna head unit. Mounting foot, which includes integrated 5 meter of coaxial cable. 12 or 24 volt variable signal booster designed to help boost signal in weaker signal areas. 1 meter F to coaxial fly lead so you can connect the variable signal booster to your TV. Fused power cable to power the variable signal booster. Clamping tool to clamp the Gazelle Pro to your vehicle roof. Finally, an accessories pack which includes all required fixing screws, etc. Here is a list of the tools and equipment you will need to complete this installation. Power drill 2mm drill bit 22mm drill bit Posi drive number 2 screwdriver 4mm allen key or hex bit Cleaning cloths and suitable cleaning agent Silicon adhesive we recommend Sikaflex 522 Caravan, marker pen, knife. Finally, a multimeter is useful if you have one, but not essential. Firstly, decide on where you will have the Gazelle Pro aerial on your roof. Ideally, this will be towards the side of your roof, directly above a cupboard, where you can install a variable signal booster. However, the Gazelle Pro does come with 5 meters of coaxial cable, so if you would prefer to have the booster in a different location, this is not a problem. In this video, the variable signal booster will be installed in a cupboard and the cables will be routed through the roof down into a neighboring cupboard. Firstly, Tony cuts out the supplied fixing template located at the rear of the instruction manual. Then inside the cupboard space offers up the template into the roof space so he can determine a suitable place prior to drilling the hole for the cable. Always make sure you check for any hidden wiring or plumbing beforehand. Then using a suitable tool he punches the fixing positions out of the template. Tony now checks the likely position of where the clamping tool, which is designed to give a secure and watertight installation, will be attached once the mounting foot has been installed. Next, using a mark he made on the roof light, Tony chooses the optimum location on the roof for the antenna. He is limited in where the antenna can be located by the roof ridges, but knows that by placing it between them, the cables will still come down into the cupboard below. Once he determines the correct hole locations, he uses a suitable cleaning agent to clean the area where the antenna will be fitted. This is an essential step to ensure a good bond and seal. After this, he ensures the area is dry. Using the fixing template, he marks the five holes with a pen, making sure to align the arrow on the antenna to face the front of your vehicle for the best aerodynamic performance. Once all the holes are marked, Tony uses a 22mm hole saw to drill the first hole marked Y on the template through the roof. Once drilled, he cleans the area thoroughly to remove any debris. Next, Tony drills four pilot holes marked X using a 2mm drill bit.
Due to the type of roof this vehicle has, he uses a metal primer on the holes to protect the exposed edges to corrosion. Tony now offers the mounting foot to the roof and feeds the 5 meters of coaxial cable through the 22 millimeter hole. Once all the cable is through, Tony applies a hybrid adhesive or sealant to the base of the foot. In this case, he is using Sikaflex 522. To give an additional watertight installation, Tony also applies a ring of adhesive around the centre hole. He now firmly pushes down the foot onto the roof, making sure the foot is facing the correct orientation as mentioned previously. Then using the four roof mounting screws, he screws these through the foot into the roof. With the foot now securely fixed, he cleans away any excess of adhesive. Tony now gets the antenna head unit and places it onto the fitted foot. Then using the four-foot mounting screws and a hex key, he secures it all tightly together. Now the antenna is fully fitted, Tony works inside the cupboard. At this stage, you need to feed clamping tool onto the cable and screw this into the underside of the mounting foot. Tony now neatly runs the coaxial cable through the divider to the location of where he intends to fit the variable signal booster.
he uses P-clips to secure the cable for a neat installation. Now that the coaxial cable has passed through to where the booster will be located, he cuts off any surplus cable that is no longer needed. Tony now prepares the cable so that the supplied F connector can be fitted. Detailed instructions on how to do this are included in the manual. Once the F connector is correctly fitted to the cable, he connects this to the variable signal booster. Next, Tony connects a coaxial cable from the TV to the variable signal booster. In this installation, Tony is attaching a cable from a TV socket built into the cupboard. However, the kit does come complete with a 1 meter F to coaxial fly lead, so you can connect the variable signal booster to your TV. Tony now mounts the variable signal booster to the cupboard using the screws provided. Using a multimeter, he checks the supply voltage to the variable signal booster, which should be between 12 and 24 volts DC. To power the variable signal booster, he connects the fused power cable to an existing power supply cable running from the vehicle's leisure battery. Once the power is checked, he plugs the power cable into the variable signal booster, then pushes the on button to test if it is working as the blue LED illuminates. The variable signal booster comes with an attenuator knob so that the signal strength can be adjusted high or low as and when required. Tony finally adds the two screw covers included in the pack to hide the screws. Now that all the cables are connected, the auto-tune function on the TV can be used to program all available TV and radio channels. Once the channels have been automatically stored onto the TV, which may take a few minutes, you can begin to watch all available terrestrial Freeview channels wherever you are. And that's it. Thank you, Tony, for your help with the creation of this video.